I'm that redstone guy. And here we see today a pink sheep in its natural habitat. And today we're going to light this thing on fire. Hit it. Welcome back to part two of three if, of my uh, quarry tutorial thing in what's a jigger. Uh, we're going to get into programming right now. Um, I'm going to be in survival mode for this just so that um, uh, any eye doesn't, or oh, creative mode doesn't mess with the discs. I don't think it will, but yeah. I'm just going to grab myself a fourth boot disc and a blank floppy out of any eye because it's a good idea to back up your programs before you run them. So I'm going to put the uh, fourth boot disk into there, not the blank floppy, and then I'm going to boot the computer. After you've booted it, it'll show up here. Um, and you, to get started, we want to uh, see which frequencies, uh, uh, which directions. Uh, we've got one, and that's going to bring the quarry this way. And I'm going to assign them in relation to uh, how they are to the monitor. So uh, this way will be left in relation to this monitor. So uh, we're going to define a new word, uh, do a colon and then space and then the word left, then new word, and we'll type in the code for this. Uh, it's very similar for all of them. Uh, since we're doing one, it's one IOX set, because we want to set it, uh, 24 ticks, um, and then uh, one IOX reset, um, and then 16 ticks, I believe it is. I don't think you can go any better without it not working in loops. So uh, that, and then we want to compile the word. And then that'll take a little while. But, and then we can type the word left, and then the whole query will move left. And to make sure it works in a loop, what we can do is like, uh, we'll do two, or sorry, do four times left, one, two, three, four. There, it worked. Okay, so now we're going to do this for pretty much every direction. And because I assigned the numbers, like the very next binary number will be the opposite direction, two is going to be right, because the opposite of left is right. So I'm going to go ahead and make this word now, and I'll get back to you in a second. Now, as you can see here, this word um, is very well. This word is very similar to the previous one, just having a two here and a two here instead of the one. Uh, I'm now going to use the wireless remote to figure out what four and eight are. So I'm just going to adjust this to four, and we'll see that four brings it uh, backwards. So we're going to uh, write a new word back and I'm going to write the code in for that again. And again, very similar to the first one. Oh, I just realized I screwed that up. That needs to be a four. I'll just fix that. All right, there we go. And because of the one we did previously, like I said, um, over here, four and eight being opposite um, each other, we're going to do the new command um, forward, and that will be over eight. I'm going to write all the commands now up and down as well because uh, I'm sure you'll be able to do this with this, and yeah. Ah, you can see here, I forgot to put a space there. That's very important, so I'm just going to redo that word again. Alright, now we need to check what up and down are. So we've done 8, so either 16 or 32 must be up. So I'm going to go to 16, and we'll see that 16 is moving the quarry down, so 32 is up. I'm now going to write the... Um, the word for down, which is over 16, so that's 16 IOX set, 24 ticks, um, 16 IOX reset, 16 ticks. Um, I'll explain what this does. Um, 16 IOX set basically just sets the uh, right colored line over here. Stupid rain. Um, uh, and then it, uh, well, I did 14 ticks. That's got to be 24, sorry. Let me fix that. So 
So like I was saying, it sets it to 16 and then it uh, stays on for a period of 24 ticks and then it resets 16 again and leaves and then waits a period of 16 ticks. So uh, the reason we do 24 ticks is because a frame motor takes 16 ticks in total to move um, and uh, 24 is uh, 16 plus uh, 8. So 16 ticks will activate the first motor and still be on when the next motor is moved into place, which will automatically start moving the next one. Now, I would, would make this 8 ticks, but um, uh, red, wireless redstone doesn't turn off, or red power doesn't turn off while it's moving, so um, unfortunately you need a little bit of extra delay. Uh, yeah, So um, I'm going to program the up word and then get into the dig word after that. Alright, that's the up word done. Uh, now we're going to see what the dig word is. Now we've got one last piece of um, wire here, and that's on 64, so I'm just going to go up to 64, so it can confirm that it's still working. And you'll notice there that it dug um, some stuff. Uh, so that's on frequency 64. Now with the block breaker, I believe um, that you can pulse for 8 ticks and then reset for 4 ticks. So it doesn't have to be quite as long as the other things. So we're going to create a new word, dig, and we're going to set uh, 64 IOX set. Um, and of course now you're beginning to see why 64 and the actual thing being the same is a good idea because if we made the uh, frequencies different, the, w the frequencies wouldn't line up with what we're writing in here. So it just made it a lot easier in the programming side of things. Uh, then we're going to go 8 ticks, and then I believe we can set it low for 4 ticks. So then we go 64 IOX reset, and then 4 ticks. Actually, I don't even think we need a delay because you're not going to be breaking stuff um, like straight one after the other because you're going to have to move first to a new place for new blocks to be able to be broken. So uh, I'm going to compile that now. Um, and that should get a dig word going and we'll test that in just a sec. Oop, move my mouse a bit too slowly. What happened there? Okay, that was weird. Um, yeah, bug with wireless redstone, apparently. Maybe, I'm not sure. Anyway. Um, we'll test that dig word again. It was a bit too fast to catch before, but I think we might be able to see it if I go... There we go. You could see it. So that's working. Um, and now we want to get into the algorithms for digging a small, small pattern. I'm just, I'm not going to do the 8x8 eight eight sort of thing I had before just yet. Um, but in order for this thing to dig, it can't just go dig and then down, because we've got this middle row, you'll, as you'll see here, that hasn't been dug. So uh, how are we going to do that? Well, what we're going to do is move the quarry either like this way or this way, and then dig, and then it's going to move down, and then go the other way, and then dig, and then go across, and then down, and then dig, and then um, down, and so on and so forth. So um, uh, I'm going to call this uh, word cycle, and of course this is um, it, this uh, query is again in relation to um, to uh, the direction of the console that I've made here. So uh, what we're going to do first. Um, uh, is uh, move the we're going to dig first, sorry dig and then we're going to move forward because we want to start uh, the um, thing close to us then move away from us and then uh, dig and then come back so we're going to dig, forward, dig um, uh, oh, I, oh yes I did make the down word, sorry uh, down, dig back, dig, and then down, and that is a cycle, and there we go, and we can compile that, and we're going to see if this works, 
by running that command. So now it's going to dig, and then it's going to go down. And now you'll see it's cleared an area, and now it's able to move down. That's going to dig. Uh, did I not write the word properly? Probably. Um, wait a minute. So it's going to dig, forward, dig, down, dig, back, dig, down. So that should have worked. So I'm just going to move the quarry up now and back into position and then I'm going to run the cycle again and see why it's not working. There we go. So move down, dig, and then down. Okay, it worked. Uh, I'm not sure why it wasn't working before, but uh, yeah, now it is working. So uh, we're going to test that in a loop now by running the command, the cycle uh, several times. So we're going to go four times cycle, and that's going to dig down eight blocks. So that Notice it's pretty quick digging out an area this small. It's just going down, and across, and then down. Heck, we can even stand on it and watch it, and it goes down pretty quickly. Uh, but I'm not going to bore you with that for too long, because you'll be able to build one of these in your own world and watch it in your own eyes. But, uh, yeah, the reason it's flashing is because I've got Optifine and I'm recording at the moment. Normally it's smooth um, if you don't have Optifine and if you're not recording. Um, but yeah, um, I'll get back to you in a second. Alrighty, look like looks like it's finished. That didn't take very long, believe me, after it was caught, uh, finished recording just there before. Um, so yeah, you can do a quarry. Uh, you can move your quarry into position, um, however you like. I'm just going to go uh, ten times up. I'm going to move the quarry up and then I'm going to bring it and now you can use these commands to get your quarry to move into position and then just dig in a new hole but uh, what happens if you want to dig out a large area like an 8x8 area say you don't want to dig like um, a, a hole this small and then have to leave it and then constantly be coming back and forth and back and forth um, so uh, I'm going to bring the quarry up again one more time and now it's up so what do we do in a um, if we want to dig an 8x8 area? So um, we do this. I'm going to create a new word, and I'm going to call it 8x8. And for this, what we want to do is go dig, forward, dig. And now instead of going um, uh, down, what we want to do is move to the right, this way. Um, so what we do to get, because we want to move it four times because there's four block breakers, um, it's four block breakers wide in that um, direction, we're going to go four, zero, do, right, loop, and that moves it four to the right, and then we want to dig, and then back, because we want to move it back towards us, and then, um, and then after that, we want to dig, remember always digging after every movement, and then down, and now it's um, sort of like if it went, it goes in like a U shape, and then it's down. So then after that we want to go dig, forward, dig, and then we want to do four, zero, do, left loop and then after that let me just see what I'm let me just uh, recollect my thoughts all right I'm back now we remember we want to dig after this and then go back and then it should be back in its original position so it should have gone all the way up like this and then across and then like that and then gone like that again and then we want to move it down ready for uh, sorry we want to dig first and then move it down ready for the next cycle and um, then we can press enter oh sorry I'll put a semicolon to compile and then enter 
and then after this we'll run the command and see how it goes in digging an area too deep. So it's, I'm just going to let it run over some previously dug terrain, but it'll clear out this area over here as well, you'll notice, so it fires, and then it'll fire over here, and then it's going to move down, dig there, and then dig there. And it'll come all the way over to here, dig again, and then dig again, and then move down. And then it's ready for the next cycle. So I'm going to move this to um, a little uh, a little closer over here, and then run it a couple of times using the times command. Alright, as you can see, I've moved the quarry into position, and now I'm going to do um, the... Uh, let's say, uh, what's 64 divided by 2? That's 32. So we're going to run it 32 times, and then we're going to uh, run the 8 by 8 command. And now it's going to dig an 8 by area, 8 by 8 area, down too deep, 32 times, which should reach all the way down to bedrock here. Uh, now, um, in the interests of entertainment, I am going to run a time lapse. Sorry, I'm going to have to cut this short, but uh, that's all you need to uh, do in your quarry. And if you ever need to stop it for some reason, uh, you can come into the CPU and hit start, and that does a soft reset. And then all you need to do is zero IOX to reset all the uh, wireless signals if they get left on. Uh, another thing you may want to do is um, expand the thing, like the actual motor itself can be expanded too, you just need to add more block breakers, pneumatic tubes and frames, and you can make this quarry really as big as you want if you want. But uh, yeah, uh, thanks for watching this part, I'll get into more, more, some more advanced programming later.